Hey everyone, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. In this video, I'm gonna go over our top five games that we played in December of 2018. This is a little bit of a new format that I'm doing each month now. I'm gonna go over the top five that we played the previous month, and I'm also going to show a few of the other games, show a few vlogs of some of the fun things we've done. So I hope you enjoy this new format. Let's get right into it with number five, which is Space Base. Space Base is for two to five players, ages 14 and up, and plays in 60 minutes. Space Base is a race to 40 points. What I like about it is that there's so many different ways that you can win. There's a bunch of cards available in the middle that you purchase. On your turn, you roll your dice and you get certain resources. The more cards you buy, the more stuff you get, and you can also get resources on other people's turns, which is a really cool aspect of that game. Allison found a really unique strategy in Space Base. Hey, I have a strategy. I'm hoping that I win. So I bought this card that lets you exchange it with any other card, and then I bought this you win card, and this one was on a nine, and this one was on a 12, so I flip-flopped them. And then I got this card that lets me boost, so if I roll uh, well, if I roll a 7 or an 8, I can boost up to this card and put a token on there. If this gets rolled, I can boost that and put that token over there. So, pretty much, my odds of winning are pretty strong right now. So, Liz rolled a 7, and I have this boost here. So, I'm going to boost it to an 8, place one charge. Now, I'm going to use my charge and take this charge here and place it anywhere on the board, which is there. Game over. In December for my monthly giveaway, I gave away a copy of Space Base to one of my subscribers and the winner of that was a guy by the name of Jeremy. He sent me a picture of him and his family playing Space Base. Check it out. What a great looking family here, enjoying time together playing a board game. I love it. Number four is Liar's Dice. Liar's Dice is for two or more players ages eight and up and plays in about 30 minutes. This is a really old game. It's a dice rolling game where you roll five dice in a cup upside down so no one can see them except you. You peek at the dice inside the cup and then you make a bid of how many dice you think at the table are of a particular number. You either increase the bid or you call the previous bidder a liar. If you call them a liar and there actually are that number of dice at the table, then you lose one of your dice. If you were correct, then they lose one of their dice. This game's been around for hundreds of years. It's actually featured in Pirates of the Caribbean. Will challenged Davy Jones to a game of Liar's Dice. If you haven't played Liar's Dice, I highly recommend it. You don't even have to buy it. You just have to have a bunch of dice. We use our copy of Sagrada to play Liar's Dice a ton in December. All you need is some cups and some dice. So if you've not tried Liar's Dice, definitely check it out. Number three is Reef. I don't own this game, but my friend Eric brought it over and we played it over the holidays. This is for two to four players ages eight and up and plays in 30 to 45 minutes. In Reef, there are a bunch of pieces of Reef in the middle of the table, different colors, and on your turn, you take these cards. When you play the card, there's a top and a bottom, and the top is what colored pieces of the Reef that you get, and then the bottom is the points that you score on your Reef if you're looking straight down at it, and they're always different. In this example, you would take two green Reef pieces and get to place them anywhere on your board, and then if at the end of your turn you have four purples in a square looking down, you would score six points. This game is a light game, but it made me think a lot more than I thought it would. Really enjoyed Reef. Number two in December was The Game. This is a new game we got in December. It's for one to four players ages eight and up and plays in 20 minutes. This was a Board Game of the Year nominee in 2015. It lost to Cult Express and was a runner-up along with Machi Koro. This is a really fun game. It's by the same makers of The Mind and it came out before The Mind. In the game, there's a deck of cards from two to 99. And then you've got four cards that are laid out in the middle of the table. There's two hundreds and two ones. And on the piles of 100, you go down. And on the piles of one, you go up. And on your turn, you have to play two cards. Everyone has a hand of six cards. You can play more if you want, but you have to play two. And you can play them on any of the piles or on the same pile. And you're trying to get rid of all the cards in the deck. There's one exception to the rule, which is the rule of 10. So if you're going down from 100 and you're down to 70, someone could play at 80 because it's exactly 10 above it bumping the pile back up and giving you a little bit more breathing room. Same on the piles going up. If you're at 34, you could bump it back down to 24 and give yourself some more room. This is a really fun game and it's only about 12 bucks right now. It's exclusively at Target or Target.com. You can't get it anywhere else. The original print is out of print. So if you want it, go check out Target. Our number one game played in December of 2018 is Istanbul. Istanbul is for two to five players ages 10 and up 
and plays in 40 to 60 minutes. One of my subscribers, Michael, came to town. We played a few games. We filmed a video that I'm working on editing that'll be out soon. And he took a look at my board game shelf of shame and said, oh man, you gotta play Istanbul. It's a great game. So we pulled it out on his recommendation, played it, and absolutely fell in love with this game. This game is really cool. It's got a grid of locations where you move your guys around and drop them off to do certain things. And you're trying to get five of these gems and there's different ways you get these resources, you can trade them in. It's a really, really unique game and there's some mechanics in it that I haven't seen anywhere else. I'd highly recommend a symbol. I'm gonna move my dude here, one, two, drop him off. Move my guy out of the police station to the Wainwright and pay seven <laughs> coins for <laughs> the last one here. Whoa, Don't. no way, Ben! Which gets me another gem. He got a gem! For the rest of the episode, I'm going to do a vlog which includes some of us playing board games, some of us going to the mountains and snowboarding. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and see what we've done the last, it's really about the last five weeks or so from Thanksgiving until the end of the year. At Thanksgiving, my brother and his family came into town. We played some board games. We also went up to the mountains and taught my nephews how to snowboard. talk for a little bit about board games. My brother and his family came in town for Thanksgiving and every time we have a family gathering there's one game that kind of takes over and we play a lot of. Last year Thanksgiving it was Coup. This year it's Wits vs Wagers which is a party game where you are answering trivia questions but you don't have to be good at trivia to be good at this game. Everyone puts their no answers out which are all numbers. You line them up lowest to highest and then the payouts, the further they are away from the median, the more they are, and you bet on which answer you think is the correct, which is the closest without going over. It's a really fun party game, great with large groups of people. We have nine between our two families. So definitely check out Wits vs. Wagers if you have not. I'm gonna go bomb down this last run of the day, and we'll see you soon. In December, my company had a work Christmas party and they put me in charge of board games. It was in Austin, Texas and we went to a local brewery and I was trying to figure out what kind of game could I play with 28 people. And then I thought of Wits and Wagers. You heard me mention it previously. We played that a lot over Thanksgiving. It was the perfect game for a large group of people. We had seven teams, four people on each team. Everyone got totally into the game. It was a great way to bring a whole large group of people together. You owe us something. The percentage of the world's surface that is water is 71%. After the Christmas party, we went next door to a bar and hung out there for a while and played some games of the mine, and that was a lot of fun as well. 
I went up to Beaver Creek with some of my friends. Check out a vlog I put together of that trip. We're at Beaver Creek. They got 12 inches yesterday. The sun's peeking through the clouds. This should be epic. Yeah, ready for it. You ready, Ethan? Yes, absolutely. Here. I caught it. <laughs> With my left hand while holding a beer. You you can't do your waterproof camera thing on me, bud. The mountain was beautiful that day, over 12 inches of snow, it was amazing. We got back to the condo that night, and I don't have any video, but we played Game of Thrones Catan, which was an absolute blast, and we also played some Space Base. I was at Target the other day, and I always make my normal loop past the board game section just to see what they have there, and I came across this. Flush and Frenzy. Push the plunger till the poop pops up. I, who thought this was a good idea? Seriously. some. There were some adults somewhere at a company that sat down and said, we should make a game about this. It would be a big hit. Let's put a giant piece of poop on there and let's put a brother and sister who appear to be having so much fun plunging the toilet. I don't know who has fun plunging a toilet. The toilet is even included. But what really takes the cake is the tagline on the box. Poop, there it is. I really wonder what tag team thinks about this. I mentioned my subscriber Michael came to town last month. We shot a video that I'm working on editing and will be out soon. We also played a few board games together. We just finished playing Azul. What'd you think, Michael? You know what? I liked it. I liked it a lot. At first, I didn't think I was gonna like it. I just read a little bit about it, and after playing it, I like it. I think I'm gonna buy it. Definitely. I had 65. 68. I had 70. All game long, I was thinking, oh, she doesn't see me coming, I've got all these end game bonuses. And then she ended up with two vertical rows, was 14, mine was 17, I had three more end game bonus points, but she had way more at the end, and I did. squeaked out a victory over both of us. But it was super close, I like that about this game. Yeah. We're all within five points. Oh yeah. Can you see why it won board game of the year now? I can, yeah. It, it's easy to teach, easy to learn. The components are nice. Yeah, it looks... I really like the components, like the tiles, they feel nice. On Christmas afternoon, we had some friends over, we hung out for the afternoon, played some board games. We started off with bingo. Be before you laugh, 
We actually had a lot of fun. It involved everyone in the whole group. We had close to 15 or 20 people playing it. And I have this old school bingo set where you turn the handle and the balls roll out. We had a prize table that had some Starbucks gift cards and a card game and a few other little toys. It was a lot of fun. B15. Oh. Bingo! After that, we played some Cash and Guns, which is a hilarious game about robbing a bank and getting outside and then everybody pulls a gun on each other and they try and split the cash up. And you have blanks and you have bullets and you have to try and see who's bluffing, who's actually gonna fire at you and not. It's, it's fun. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> two with me? Oh, you're going after me? <laughs> I'm gonna wrap the video up with my new purchases over the last six weeks. I've got more than normal because of Christmas, so let's go ahead and get them up to the table now. Cool. I'm gonna start with this thing called a lens ball, and it's a glass ball. It's not really a board game related thing, but it distorts things and does some really cool things. So I've experimented with some board game pictures with this. It's even got a little stand here. Check out some of the cool pictures that I've made. Next, my friend Sean sent me for Christmas this mug that says, if I seem to be distracted, it's because I'm thinking about board games. He also sent me these Meeple coasters. Aren't those awesome? Allison got me Pocket Hive along with the Pillbug expansion, which is really cool. I got this game called Arboretum for Christmas, which was recommended by one of my subscribers who said it was really good, so I'm gonna give this a shot. I got the game, which was in my top five list. Really fun. My friend Eric got me Isle of Sky from Chieftain to King. This won the Kennerspiel des Jahres, which is the connoisseur board game of the year a few years ago. This is a fun one. I've played it once before and I'm excited to get it back to the table. The next one I got, Allison got me Castle of Mad King Ludwig. Ludwig, however you say it. And then these are the ones that I just have picked up myself over the last six weeks. Streaking Kittens, the next expansion for Exploding Kittens. Gauntlets and Goblins was a Kickstarter that I backed, I would say a year and a half ago. And it's just a deck of cards. It's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons for ages six and up. And uh, you've got these different cards that have like healing or monsters that you fight and stuff. And it's supposed to be fun. So we'll give that a shot. I got Scythe Encounters, which is a little mini expansion for Scythe with some more encounter cards. Exodus Paris Novois, did I say that right? This is the Dystopian Universe, which is the same company, Indie Boards and Cards, that made the Resistance. It's kind of like Resistance 2.0 from what I've heard. It's supposed to be really fun. I picked up Terraforming Mars Colonies, the expansion that came out the end of last year. And then Cosmic Run Regeneration, I backed on Kickstarter and it just arrived. I gave away a copy in January. We'll definitely be playing this one shortly. We have the original Cosmic Run and we played it a ton. It's a lot of fun. That's it for this month in board games and I hope you enjoyed this new format. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Instead of doing weekly, I'm gonna do monthly wrap ups like this. Hopefully this gave you some ideas of some games that you can play with your families and friends. Thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time. Bye.